Hey everyone, it's Neil here from Post to Post. Uh, thanks for joining me today, I appreciate you. I wanted to make a follow-up video on the Shifley hit and the video that I posted last night. I don't necessarily regret making that video, but it was made in the heat of the moment, and I do think that I was maybe a little bit too harsh on a couple of things. Um, the title, that said disgusting hit, I, I, if I was going to regret anything, it would probably be naming that video Disgusting Hit. I don't regret saying I was mad. I was mad. But uh, Disgusting Hit, after watching it back today, after sleeping on it and thinking about it, and then analyzing it literally frame by frame, and we're going to go through that in this video. I'm going to show you what I think are the key frames leading up to the incident, after the incident, and obviously during the incident, and uh, really break this play down and see what, what really happened uh, frame by frame. So I don't necessarily regret saying that, uh, you know, I'm disappointed in Shifley or that it was predatory. I am disappointed in Shifley. It was predatory in my opinion. But we're going to talk about was this hit dirty or was this hit clean or maybe in between. So I just have to say that um, I, I thank you guys uh, to anyone who, even though if you disagree with me, you left a respectful comment. Uh, you don't have to name call to get your opinion across, and unfortunately there was a lot of those comments. If you disagree, that's totally fine. There really is no right or wrong. It is all opinion based. That's basically what YouTube is, is one big opinion. But if you disagree, just construct your opinion uh, respectfully. Like, I don't think I was disrespectful to any, any of you in my video. I was talking about Shifley, I was talking about the play. I never said anything negative about any fans, any Jets fans, nothing like that. I think he, even at the end of the video, I said, and if you disagree with me, then I get, oh, well, I guess, like, that, that's really it. And then the, the amount of unbelievably disrespectful comments in the comment section was, uh, was crazy. But I, I know I understand the emotion runs the other way. But if you resort to name calling and throwing stones and stuff, it just takes almost the validity out of your argument when you have to resort to that, because that's the easy way out. If you want to make an impact, if you want to actually argue your point, argue it respectfully. Be logical. Put your points down and stuff. It doesn't have to be this big, you know, mudslinging event. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's let's review the play and then let's I'll give some some updated thoughts on the situation. And I have I think roughly 17 frames to go through, so let's let's break it down. And I want to start off where the play really started off in the Montreal end. So the first frame here is is Mark Shifley, uh, and off to the left you can see Carey Price. And I've drawn arrows on all of these screenshots to show kind of what I'm going to talk about and what, what I want to highlight. So at the, the curvature of the arrow actually uh, imitates the path in which Shifley left the zone or started to leave the zone and circle around and actually start to backjack. And so this is the point right here, just below the hash marks in the Montreal Canadiens end where Shifley was, was doing some crossovers, picking up speed and about to exit the zone full force. It's pretty far away. Now, I will say that a lot of people said, oh my god, he lined up this hit from, from the Montreal end. I know it probably looks like that. That's not actually what happened. I mean, there is no way that Mark Shifley decided right at this moment that he was going to skate down the entire length of the ice and demolish someone. That's just not how it is. Okay, this next frame, we've skipped ahead quite a bit here. He's at the, uh, he's at the center line. He's in the middle of the rink. Um, and you can see his trajectory. He is in full stride, skating as fast as he can up. And just notice the angle. I can't remember the player that was off to his left skating, but that player is ahead of him going in the same direction. But uh, just notice that Mark Shifley is, I don't know, probably two or three strides behind him. And then the next frame, we've gone just past the blue line, and Mark Shifley has already caught up to this other player, has already passed this other player by probably a stride, entering into the top of the circle into the um, actual Winnipeg zone, where Jake Evans is now just approaching behind the net uh, and he's still he's just just barely letting up on his stride here and the next frame you can see that this is the point where he he actually lets up he's just above the hash mark his body is has started to come back up he's just starting to glide at this point the player to his left is also coming in he is also just kind of starting to glide because he knows notices that Shifley has has passed him and Shifley is continuing his trajectory uh, towards the net and the next one, this is a pretty telling one. Um, so from, from, from this screenshot, you could argue, well, Shifley really didn't have time to stop the puck because that's what it really does look like in this uh, scenario. But this is the point. This is a really important frame because this is the point where Shifley 
makes the decision that's going to cost him here. He makes the decision not to play the puck and to play the body. He doesn't care about Jake Evans scoring a goal. And that's where I have a problem with, with this entire thing. This is the point where it's predatory, and this is the point that's going to get him in trouble. Now, as I'm filming this, uh, I believe he's still underway with the Department of Player Safety. They have not released his fine or his suspension. So as I'm filming this, I don't know. By the time that this video releases, that will almost certainly be released. But you can tell that Mark Shifley, at this point, has decided that he is going to hit Jake Evans. Look at the posture of his body. He has started to lean down, bend his knees. Um, he's his the curvature of his body, he is lowering his hips, lowering his shoulders, and uh, he plans to hit Jake Evans, whether Jake Evans has the puck, has or has already scored, or what. He doesn't care. He's already made the decision. And Jake Evans is back there, and he's looking down at the puck, and he, again, not to victim blame, but you should, you should keep your head up. Be aware, especially when you have a concussion history. Uh, this next frame is also extremely telling because as Jake Evans is still looking down, approaching the front of the net to wrap around, you can clearly see that Mark Scheifele is not looking at the puck whatsoever. He's looking directly at Jake Evans. He doesn't care about the puck, and he is his intent is to hit him as hard as he can, basically, uh, not necessarily to give him a concussion or hit him in the head or the result of what happened, but you can tell that Mark Scheifele is... A, his intent here is to bring the pain, and there's really nothing wrong with that, but it's just an odd play to have this happen, and it's just, it's just strange. We'll get into it deeper. And this next frame is, is kind of almost that same exact uh, period. And this is one of the most, if not the most important frames, because this proves that Mark Scheifele could have easily played the puck and potentially, and most likely, saved the goal here. He is, he is just at the top of the blue paint. He is crouched down. He has his shoulder front. He is preparing for the hit. He is looking at Jake Evans, not looking at the puck. But you'll notice that his stick, even though he, he is bent and bent kind of back like this, if he was still in full stride and he went in like this and reached in with his stick, there's no way Jake Evans is getting that wraparound. He, Mark Scheifele could have his, his stick past the goalpost already at this point. So this is really damning towards uh, Scheifele, in my opinion. And uh, again, arched back, getting ready for the hit, preparing for the shoulder. Jake Evans still not looking, just focused on scoring a goal. You still got to keep your head up, even in, in these situations. And I said in my video yesterday, you always want to keep your head up, and, and except for in situations like this, you know, you're scoring an, an, um, an empty net goal. There shouldn't be a massive, crazy uh, hit like this. Um, but, you know, at the same time, he, he, I was wrong. He should have his head up. Every hockey player should have their head up at any moment. Number eight, or the eighth frame, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is this is where things get pretty serious. Uh, Mark Scheifele is, is a millisecond away from bracing for his impact. He has his shoulder down. He's not... He's not leaving his feet. The level of his shoulder is at the same level as Jake Evans' boob, <laughs> his chest right here. Jake Evans has his left arm up. Mark Scheifele is preparing to hit Jake Evans kind of right here, right on the shoulder area. Uh, he's, he has his knees bent, his back still arced, uh, and he's planning to hit, not even pay attention to the puck. At this point, the puck is just crossing the line, and Jake Evans is not even looking at Mark Scheifele. On the ninth frame I have here, you can see that uh, Mark Scheifele as he is just like just a split second away from making contact, he has his feet on the ice. And I saw a lot of people saying that he left his feet. That's just not true. Like that's that's not even a that's not even arguable. It's fact. Like his his feet are on the ice right here. He did not leave his feet. The impact you can see, if we just follow that horizontal plane, uh, Mark Scheifele's shoulder goes into kind of this area of of Jake Evans. Now, hit their helmets or their heads are almost at the same height. Mark Scheifele's is just a little bit higher, but you can tell, uh, I think it's maybe the next frame, If I'm, I'll just skip ahead. You can tell that Mark Scheifele's body has started to move up. So as Mark Scheifele has come in, he's bent down, he's braced for the impact, and as he makes contact, or just before, a split second before, he starts to raise up. And that's why this, the the way that, his, that Jake Evans' body has flopped around here at the end, which you'll see, that's why that happened, because of the momentum shift from um, down and then up and transferring the weight up. His feet are still on the ice. He still has not left his feet. Uh, so as the primary point of contact here, right here, this is where the impact happened. Um, it happened right here, boom, like almost like this boom. He did get like part of like the neck and face and then the, here, uh, but the primary point of contact is kind of right here in the shoulder. Skates are still on the ice. 
And this next frame, it doesn't look that great. It's kind of at the same time period, uh, but you can see Jake Evans. He's he's kind of he's he has hit his head at this point, or um, he's just about to. Mark Scheifele is leaning in with his shoulder, no elbow, only shoulder. Go to the next frame, and this is where I think most of the damage happens. You can see the impact happened. The main impact happened right here because it forces his arm out. It 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 causes his his whole back to curl like this. So it's right here and a part of the chin in this area, from what I can tell. And then as this happens, Jake Evans has like almost like whiplash like this. And then that forces his head kind of just, just slightly like this into the top of the shoulder, into Shifley's head. And look, his feet, his feet are just barely off the ice. They're just starting to come off the ice. And this is, you know, we're a couple of frames into the impact here. The next frame, this is where Mike Sh Mark Shifley's uh, skates start to come off the ice because of that upward momentum, the, the transfer of weight. Here you can really see the whiplash in effect. The back has started to fall back. The shoulder is still forward. It's starting to come back as well, but still pretty forward. So you can see where Evans got hit here, but his head is still like this. So you can see that whiplash effect, and that's where the damage happened. That is a very telling frame. And the next one, Mark Scheifele's uh, feet are completely off the ice here, probably by about a foot at least. And... Um, Jake Evans is is unconscious at this point, unfortunately, and you can see that Mark Scheifele's elbow is up, but he done he never makes contact with the elbow with the head. That this is a bit, a bit of an illusion, in my opinion. Uh, he it just it's just part of the follow through. So there was to me, I didn't see any elbow or anything like that. I saw a couple of people arguing that. I just I just I did I disagree with that. This was a shoulder hit, uh, but yeah, his feet are off the ice here, and that was that's all to do with the momentum and, and weight shift. The next frame. The other player, again, I forget who it is, he's still focused on the puck. He's not even looking at the hit. Mark Scheifele is looking, uh, is not looking at the puck either. He still doesn't care about the puck. This was all about laying a big, giant hit. You can tell from Evan's body position here that he is unconscious. He is not even bracing for the impact. A lot of people said, well, the injury happened when, you know, when he hit his head on the ice afterwards. If that was true, he would have been bracing at this point. You can, he's, he's being ragdolled right here. You can tell that he is not conscious. Uh, Mark Scheifele is looking down, so again, not looking at the puck. The next frame, uh, which is I think the last frame in this in this here, you, again you can tell Jake Evans' body position. He is, he's gone. His arms are limp like this. Like he is, he's sleeping. He has no idea what's going on here, and uh, it's really unfortunate. It's super super scary, and uh, yeah. So the last frame I have actually is something I did not talk about in my video. It's Ehlers. Ehlers comes in and it completely protects every other person and look at the linesman there too I, I apologize i don't know the name of the linesman he's also trying to do the same thing uh he's not worried about trying to break up the fights or anything like that he's completely concerned with keeping people off jake evans because he recognizes the um the severity of the hit and the severity of the injury and so does ehlers so mad props to ehlers i can't say enough good things about how much of a, a wonderful human being he is for doing this not really caring about the game because at this point it goes beyond hockey and for those people saying, I know Jake Evans deserved it. Sometimes hockey is important. Sometimes living is, is more important. This could change his livelihood. This could change his career. This could potentially lead to him retiring at a very, very early age. I believe he's 25 as of yesterday when this happened. So um, full props to Ehlers. I'm, he's basically become my, my favorite player on the Jets uh, because of that. And um, I just can't say enough good things about him. Someone give him the Medal of Honor. That was awesome. So my thoughts are, I, at first I thought it was a disgusting hit. It was very late at night. It was almost midnight here. By the time I got done filming it, it was midnight. And I was very frustrated. I, was, I wasn't really that angry um, at Shifley specifically. I was angry for the fact that in this, for the second time in two weeks, I got to see someone unconscious on the ice and have them stretchered off. I understand it's a physical sport. I, I like big hits, I, but I don't like predatory big hits like that. I don't like hits that are uh, that lead to that, that lead to that injury. I want to see big open ice hits that are, I guess, fair. Maybe that's a, a, a bad word, but I want to see like a good hockey hit. To me, that's not a good hockey hit. That was predatory. It was a stupid play by Shifley. I, I suspect he'll get suspended for at least two games. I'm probably thinking like four. At first, I was like, you know, throw the book at him. It's it's eight. But after I analyzed it frame by frame, 
I think it could be classified as a as a clean hit uh, because he did do the, he did do everything right in the hit. He didn't leave his feet. The primary point of contact was here in the shoulder. It was the whiplash that was the problem. So I think he did everything right with the hit. My problem is everything that led up to the hit. The fact that he made the decision to ignore the puck uh, at at the top of the hash marks, so beyond the top of the hash marks, and go for the hit and prepare for the hit that far in advance. To me, that says I'm going to not necessarily give you a concussion. And, you know, like Mark, Mark Shifley did not want that to happen, but he did want to hurt him. Like he did want to hurt him. That's the entire point of laying big hits like that. You want to hurt your enemy and you want to send a message. But I don't think Mark Shifley uh, meant for that to happen. You could just tell afterwards he was genuinely concerned and, and I guess shocked more than anything. And Paul Byron actually said, I think it was this morning that he confirmed that Mark Shifley um, was, I don't know the right words. He didn't say remorseful, but he just said that he was concerned possibly um, or he, he didn't mean to immediately afterwards. Like he under, he realized the severity of the situation. So I am, I think it's important to forgive people because when you hold grudges, it is, I don't think it's good for your mental health to hold grudges. I think it's okay to get mad at people for right reasons. I I don't regret being mad at, at, at Mark Shifley. I hope he gets suspended. I hope he gets fined, whatever it is that the NHL player of safety is going to do. It's probably going to be inconsistent like everything else they do, but still, um, I'm, I've am i forgiven Mark Shifley a day after, less than a day after. I've forgiven Mark Shifley because I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He is not a repeat offender. He is a, a generally a wonderful person up to this point, we could argue. Uh, I, st- I still believe that he, I still I th- still think he is a wonderful person. I think he just made a really stupid mistake. I think he let his emotions get the best of him the entire, the entire game, really. He was, he was a bit, he was a bit off the entire game. I think he got his, his emotions, yeah, I think, I think they, I think they controlled him. So I don't, I don't want to hold a grudge against Mark Shifley. I'm going to forgive Mark Shifley and give him, him, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and, um, hope, hopefully that he, he learns his lesson because, Mark Shifley is, he's not just a hockey player. Like he's a, he's a mentor. He's a role model. He works with kids as a, as a mentor in, in Winnipeg. Like kids look up to him. And I think he realized that right afterwards. Like his face was just, yeah, it's hard to describe. It's almost like, it's almost like he thought that he just killed someone. Like his face was just like, I I don't know what I just did. So I, I don't necessarily feel bad for Mark Shifley, but I do forgive him. I think it is important to forgive people. But I, I definitely hope he gets suspended, and I hope he learns from this. Um, but yeah, so that's my thoughts. Um, I think it. I think it was a. I think the hit was clean, but I think the decision to make the hit was completely unacceptable and predatory, and that's the problem, and that's what's going to get Mark Shifley in, in trouble. Because it was the decision beforehand, not the actual hit. Um, it was charging, and the way that the rule is written, it does encounter the lead-up time to it. It's a weird, it's a weird play. It's a weird situation based on how the rules are written. So, I'm again, I'm conflicted, and I'm still, I'm still processing this. It's not even 24 hours since it happened. I'm still processing this, but I've, I've, I've decided to forgive Mark Shifley. I've decided to. Uh, welcome him back into the series if he gets suspended for two games or three games or whatever it is. If there's a, an, an opportunity for him to come back in the series, I welcome him back. I've, I will forgive him and I give him the benefit of the doubt that he will not ever do that again. And that uh, someone on the Montreal Canadiens is likely going to probably try and give him the business. <laughs> uh, I hopefully, in a, in a respectful way, have a fight, punch him in the face a couple of times, like the good old boys do, and uh, and squash it at that. It's really unfortunate about Jake Evans. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Canadians fan. I know I'm wearing Vancouver, but if you're new, I am a Canadians fan. Um, but it, it's really unfortunate. Obviously, I don't want to see one, one of my favorite or my, one of my uh, team's players get injured like that at all. And it's like his fourth concussion or something crazy, or maybe fifth. So I don't know about Jake Evans' future. It's really, really tough. But I think it is important to 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 forgive Mark Shifley. So if you're if you're angry at Mark Shifley. Be angry at Mark Shifley, but consider consider thinking about forgiving him eventually, because everybody makes mistakes. I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. 
Some mistakes are small, some mistakes are big. But I think everyone deserves a second chance. And if anyone in the NHL deserves a second chance, guys, it's Mark Scheifele. He is a he is a generally wonderful uh, person, a student of the game, and I'm I'm a little disappointed in myself for being so angry last night. But at the same time, I don't necessarily regret it. Um, I just think it's important to forgive and forget. Not sorry, that's bad wording. Not forget. I'm never I'm never going to forget this. I think it's important to forgive and move on and give someone the second uh, a, a second chance because I think second chances are important because we all make mistakes. So that is my final conclusion. On this, on this play. I'm glad that I had more time to kind of think about it. I don't regret making the video last night, like I said, but uh, I appreciate you guys watching. If you watch this as well, thank you so much. I really appreciate, appreciate that. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button down below. I'll be posting videos, hopefully not like this, looking at crazy plays uh, and suspensions and hits and whatnot, but talking about playoff hockey and, uh, you know, unboxing jerseys and looking at jersey concepts and, and all that fun stuff. Um, so, We'd love to have you on board. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And tomorrow coming is actually a video from Dad. A lot of you have asked for the GOAT to give his opinion on the Toronto Montreal series. And he's filmed that video. I'm going to edit that tonight. So you'll see that uh, tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, I think. I did have a video planned for tonight, which I mentioned in the last video. I'm not going to release that. I'm going to release this. And I will release that on Saturday I think, or Sunday. So we'd love it if you could jump on board. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. And uh, have fun watching hockey tonight. I'll talk to you soon. Adios.